Can you really trust stock market analysts to give you the best advice to make you the Spence most money? It's really tight and delivered earnings this year have been much better. So I think the combination would support stocks. Just overall. And you heard it right there, the enthusiasm in new home construction and also in the new home market is really going to continue. My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. Not so fast there, Jim. Before we get into the video, I'm VPB Money Man. On this channel, I tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. I hit people with blunt force reality to their face. You may not like it now, but you will grow to thank me in the future. What tends to happen is people get so wrapped up into making money, making money, making money, making money. But I'm here to save you from yourself of losing money. I'm going to play you a clip and then we're going to dissect that clip. Problem for the public is that they don't understand how analysts get paid. And so they actually they, they think that the analyst is sort of on their side, kind of working for them, or at least that's what they used to think when things were good and stocks were going up. But in fact, you know, analysts get paid on the basis of how many deals they can bring to their firm and how tightly integrated they are with the underwriting process, which has nothing to do with helping small investors and everything to do with with bringing IPOs public, which makes a huge amount for the firm and which makes a huge amount for the, the, the sort of investing professional insiders who get these deals. Now, we're going to dissect that clip. And the funny thing is, Jim Cramer, anybody who's been investing a long time, Jim Cramer is kind of like the laughing stock of Wall Street. People have a running joke where whatever Jim tells you to do, do the opposite and you'll actually make money. I'm not telling you to do that. That's what a lot of people have always said about Jim. Now, nothing personal against Jim Cramer. I think his show from time to time is very amusing, but that's exactly what their shows are supposed to be. Amusing. You can't take really their advice when it comes to your money because everybody's situation is different. That clip of that uh, person speaking, I forgot his name, I'm probably gonna get copyright for that, but that was after the dot-com crash. What he's pretty much saying is, a lot of these stock market analysts, when the news channels bring them, this is, you know, Bill Davidson from, you know, Fuzzy Nuts, um, you know, equities brokerage. A lot of those people, they're talking highly of these stocks, touting these stocks because their company underwrote the stocks that they're talking about. When do you ever hear of a stock market analyst talking bad about a stock? They're usually saying, I see potential for it to run 5%, 10%. 20% 20% because people want to hear happy news the same reason why my channel is small and a lot of other people's channels are huge is because they tell people what they want to hear and not what you need to hear what tends to happen is they tout these stocks because their company, like I said, they wrote the IPOs and the public offerings. So they have personal benefits to gain from these companies. If they go on TV and badmouth a stock that one of their colleagues wrote or, or they wrote or their company, they could be blackballed out of Wall Street where they might not find a job because that stock underperformed. How many people have ever really went up there and said, this stock is a turd, it's not gonna go anywhere? You're very, very, very rarely to almost never hear it. What tends to happen is this. These banks make a lot of money off of IPOs. They get a, uh, a position uh, in the company, they get kicked back, they get a certain dollar amount for writing it up, for it going public. Whenever you hear a company has got the approval to issue more shares, somebody, a lawyer, a law firm, uh, a, a, banker, a, a, a banking institution, they had to write that up and issue all the shares for liquidity and all that crap that's so complicated. I'm just a high school dropout, but what do I know? But I got caught up in this during the dot-com crash too, where all these companies were popping up and now they're gone. Lucent Technology, Global Crossing, WorldCom, Tyco, uh, 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 Enron, all these companies were the heyday of when I was 19 and 20 years old and now they're long gone. What happens is once these IPOs go bankrupt, 
A lot of these insiders, they've been sold out. You saw what happened to Bed Bath & Beyond. The insiders sell out and then your retail traders, your everyday mom and pop people, they get caught holding this because they listen to analysts. They, used, they, uh, they actually listen to YouTube influencers touting these stocks. And a lot of YouTube influencers, they rely on analysts. They're always putting up analyzing charts. Well, this analyst is projecting it to go here and this analyst is projecting it to go there. In reality, and this is gonna, this is 100% truth, fact. As long as a company issues a business prospectus, meaning, you know those little pamphlets you get in the mail that no one ever reads? Yeah, I read them from time to time. And what happens is companies actually say, we're not profitable. We don't know when we're gonna be profitable. We don't know if we'll ever be profitable. As long as they issue that, the SEC can't do anything about that because they're warning the investor about the company. Just because an analyst says this is gonna be 20%, you gotta read the prospectus. The prospectus could say, yo, we're in debt. We don't know when we're gonna make money. We, we, you know, we're insolvent. We're relying on debt. We're relying on shareholders, you know, retail money to stay afloat and to pay our CEOs and CFOs and everybody here. And then what happens is, once they start to sell out or it gets out that the company's not making money or banks stop issuing credit, they start to sell out at peaks. And a lot of these companies, these CEOs, they try to time the peaks of when everyone's buying and they're issuing you know, more shares and they're exiting. A lot of times you gotta look at shares that are being, uh, you know, that are being acquired or, or disposed of or people or these companies that are already, and they will keep doing, they'll keep diluting your shares, issuing more shares, they're pulling money out, hoping to get more people to buy in. So this is why you really cannot trust analysts when it comes to buying stocks. You really, really need to do your own due diligence and see if companies are profitable and see if their growth and their percentage that they're projecting 10 years down the road and nobody can project the future because if they could they would just pick the powerball numbers and be done with it how can you determine where a company is going to be 10 15 5 tomorrow how do you know where a company is going to be if no one can tell the future. So don't rely on analysts, don't rely on projections. This is why they say buy an index fund, an overall market, because that way when one of these companies get caught doing fraud, which they always do, they get kicked out and you really don't feel it because there's so many other companies. You'll never be able to keep up with all the companies that are doing shady practices and all the companies that are being honest. Just buy the whole haystack instead of looking for the needle in the haystack. The sad part is a lot of people will continue to find out the hard way and we're up here trying to tell you, but hey, <laughs> what do I know? No regrets, get it.